Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to JB Jumbo Online Mathematics. Today, we are going to focus our mind on partial fraction. We said a partial fraction is written, usually written as the sum of fraction whose numerator is of lower degree than the denominator. Or we can also say when an algebraic expression is printed into some of two or more rational expressions, then each part is called partial fraction. Like this one, I can split this one into two or more uh, fractions. I can also split this one into two or more fractions. Later, we are going to look at that. Later in the discussion or in the course of a calculation, we are going to discuss that. How to split a fraction like this into other fractions. Now, now our mind now is going to be on how to identify or how to know whether if expression is a partial fraction or is a polynomial. Like what we are learning, we are learning a partial fraction. Please note, whenever the, the numerator, that is the degree of the numerator, is of, is of that is the is lower, I mean, is lower, whenever the degree of the numerator is lower than the degree of the denominator, it means that such expression is called partial fraction. You can see the degree here is 1, that the higher degree of x, that the highest power of x is 1, is 1, 1, and the highest power of x is 2. 1 is not less than the, is not less than 2, therefore expression like this is called partial fraction. When we see the one, with the 1 here, this 3x squared minus 1, all over 3, that x power 3 plus 7x minus 4, you can see the degree of s here, the numerator is less than the degree of the denominator, the of s in the denominator. It means that here I can say expression like this is called partial fraction. But if I decide to turn it, I turn it like this, turn like this, s squared plus 5s plus 4 all over 2s. Minus three. It will no longer be partial fraction. It will not be called polynomial. It will not be called polynomial. Why? Because the degree of x here is two. That is to say that the two now is higher than the one of this. You can see now it's higher. Therefore, expression like this is called polynomial. Why expression like this is called partial fraction? Please, I want you to know this the difference between. I want you to know the difference between a partial fraction and a polynomial. A polynomial is always of this form. It means that a polynomial is called an improper fraction. Why a partial fraction is called a proper fraction? This one is what? For partial fraction, for partial fraction, we call it what? A proper fraction. Partial fraction. Partial fraction. Is called proper fraction. Proper fraction. Proper fraction. But for polynomial, for polynomial like this, for this one now, we call it what? A proper fraction. Is a proper fraction. Partial fraction is what? A proper fraction. Why for the one of a polynomial? We call it what? Improper fraction. This one is called what? Improper fraction. Improper fraction. Like you say, a polynomial. This one is a polynomial. Polynomial. This one is a polynomial. But it's called what? Improper fraction. Improper fraction. This is how to identify them. In case they give you an expression like this, they give you this and give you this. You should be able to distinguish or differentiate between. Both of them. This one is partial fraction. Why this one is what? Polynomial. You know the difference. It means that in polynomial, the degree of x, that the, new, the numerator is of higher degree. Eh? It's of higher degree to the one of what? The denominator. Why for this one, the numerator is of what? A lower degree to the one of what? Uh, denominator. Okay, I think at this point I can conclude. This is all about partial fraction. And uh, we are going to look at rules of partial fraction. Our next focus now is going to be what? Rules of partial fraction. Rules of partial fraction. And we are, I'm going to give you just 30 seconds. 
digest this explanation and after which I will move to the rules of partial fraction. We are going to look at rules, different rules of solving what? A partial fraction. Our mind it will not be, our mind will not be on polynomial today. Our next class, when I'm done with this one, we enter polynomial. Okay, I will enter polynomial. But my mind or our mind it will be on the, the one of partial fraction. Thank you. Please, I will just give you like 30 seconds while you go through and digest it. And after which I will move to the rules that uh, will guide us in this topic. Thank you. Hello. I hope you can see. I hope you are still with me. You are still with me on the partial fraction. Remember I told you that we are going to continue the rules of partial fraction. We are going to look at rules of partial fraction. But the one I have here is just two rules I've given you, but I still have more, more on the, the rules. I think we are having up to uh, four, up to four rules of a partial fraction. Now, looking at the first, the first two I gave you there, looking at the first two I gave you, you can see it vividly, you can see it clearly. The first two I gave you there, you can see it, looking at it, these are the, some of the things we are going to come across when we are learning partial fraction. These are some of the things we are going to reconsider. We are going to be put into consideration when we are learning what? Partial fraction. You can see from the number one, we say linear factors. None are repeated. You can see, meaning whenever you have any form like this, this is the way you represent, you split your partial fraction. You, you do not use A and B. You go to A, over AS plus B, all over B, all over CS minus D. Mean that when you have a partial fraction like this. Look at the example I gave you here. I said 3S plus 1, all over 2S plus 1. And also, we also have 3S minus 1. Look at the way I splitted it. Look at the way I splitted it. I splitted it into two. I splitted it into two parts. Mean that I can represent this fraction like this. Meaning it's from here, and then I have to now represent the end A, B, and C, and D with the number. I will represent it with the number. Look at the way I split it. Meaning like partial fraction in this form, we represent in this pattern. Now, let's look at number two. We said repeated linear factors. You can see there, repeated linear factors. It means that whenever you have any form like this, whereby one of them has no power, it means the power is just one here. But the, the second one has power 2. You can see, meaning you have another higher power than this very one, this one here, the first one. You know, what will you do? You have to repeat the first part, which is A over the first part. And after which you repeat this one, this one you repeat it. And it becomes like this. It means that we are going to be having this one here. It comes up like this. Now, what can we none do now okay from what i have here i think i also gave you some some of the example i also gave you i think i gave you some of the example under that question two that's already the root two i mean under root two i gave you what example that repeated linear factors repeated linear factors i gave you some of the example here they are very vivid they are clear enough for you to understand please here is here is D, meaning whenever you have it in this form, this is the way you split it. And these are some of the examples. Here is D. We have a plus one. And now this is the way you also represent your partial fraction. It's very simple to represent. Don't worry, as we, as we saw in our subsequent uh, calculation or in our subsequent solving, we are going to learn how to split all these things. We are going to learn how to split them. I will teach you how to split them into different parts. Because I told you from what we have as definition, we said from here, it said when an algebra expression is split into some of two or more rational expressions. You can see there. I Meaning that is what I just done here. It has one and two. Now let's now move, move on to the third rule. Let's look at the third rule and after which we now calculate. They are the third rule and the fourth rule, after which we calculate. Now, looking at the, the rule three, 
we have root 3 and root 4 there. Root 3 and root 4, we have already uh, looked at root 1 and root 2. We already explained that. Looking at root 3 and root 4, you can see here, say quadratic factor that can be factorized. Whenever you have anything like this, this is the way you split it. Just have it to mind the way you split it. An example is this. You can look at the example, look at the way I split it. Look at the way I split it. I already split it into two parts. Two or more parts. Okay, look at group four. It's a quadratic factor that cannot be factorized. Meaning it cannot be factorized. This is the way you represent your information. This is the way you represent your information. Means that you are going to uh, split it into these parts. It means that take the first one, become a over as plus b plus. Now, here we are doing the other one, which because this one cannot be factorized. It means that it's not the one B S plus C all over the everything you have there, which is the S squared plus B. Look at example here. We have example. We have example here. Look at example. Meaning, you can say A over what? S plus 1 plus. Now, since this one cannot be factorized because of B S plus C all over, all over everything you have under. You can see this is how we represent it. Whenever it cannot be part of that. This is the present. Please, I just have it in mind. This is all about uh, rules of uh, partial fraction. This is all about what? Rules of partial fraction. Meaning our next focus now is going to be calculation. We are going to focus our mind on calculation. How we can really put all this into... Uh, how we can really put them into practice. We want to practicalize them. We have been talking since. We have been dis discussing and talking since. Let us really practicalize it. Let us really solve some questions where that we can really relate all these rules we have just written and relate them. Okay, I think we can do that. Please, I want to just I want you to just go through it. Have a, uh, I think you can take like a, two minutes to just go through it. Two minutes to just go through these rules of a partial fraction and after which now we look at calculation calculation on a partial a fraction thank you for staying with me on this uh, part and after which please i want to stay behind so that we look at the other part which is the calculation uh, part of it thank you